Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I have a brand new stencil that was just released from Simon Says Stamp. They sent this over for me to create with and I am in love with this. This is so fun. It's called Patterned Circles and look at the variety of fun little stencil openings that we have in that circular shape. These are so fun. Now I opened it up only because I haven't used it yet, but I wanted to open it up and just get an idea for how I could kind of sketch out a little design that I want to do because my first thought here was that I wanted to bring in a lot of color. And so what I thought is I want to focus right here on my little half circle. So I used this as a, well, like a stencil and I took a pencil and I created a little shape here. So what I wanna do now is, now that I kind of have an idea of what my eye visually likes, I was having a lot of fun with that, then what I'm gonna do is bring in lots of color. So I decided on pink lemonade, honeysuckle, clementine, buttercup, lemongrass, Tide Pool, scooch these over, Powder, and finally Lilac. And I want to use all of these colors to create a really fun look with these fun half circles. So I really like the idea of, you know, grabbing a stencil, grabbing a pencil, and, and oh my goodness, I'm rhyming there. Grab your pencil, grab your stencil, and then just sketch something out. I think that's really fun. It gives you a little bit of a guide of where you want to go ahead and take your card project before you get all of your inks involved. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab a new panel. And what I want to do next is I'll keep this off to the side so that I can kind of reference that. And what I'll do is bring in all of my blending brushes and we can have fun bringing some color to this beautiful panel. Okay, so here is a A2 size panel. I'm bringing it up a little bit. And put a little piece of washi tape right at the top. I'm also going to secure it right at the bottom as well. That way we just have it in one spot while we're creating. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm gonna bring in my first color, which is pink lemonade. Off to the side, I'm going to be mindful to clean off my brushes. Lately, I've been using these shop towels. They are paper towels, but they are a little bit more intended for using in like a shop setting. And I, I've said repeatedly in my videos, but in case you haven't heard, my husband and I, we ran out of regular paper towels recently, which is what I keep in my craft room. And so I went to grab some of his shop towels and I don't know that I'll ever go back because they are just, they're almost like cottony um, and they just do such a good job with cleaning. So I really like them, especially for cleaning my, my little brushes. Okay, so my first opening is going to be right here. So I'm gonna grab some additional washi tape, secure the sides, and let's make sure that that's nice and straight though. That looks good. And then I'm also going to mask off the other areas with this heffy doodle tape. You can use anything that you wish, but what I wanna do is I wanna mask off the other openings so that I don't accidentally blend ink into those areas. So I'm gonna do that, that should be plenty. And let's begin with pink lemonade. So this is a beautiful color. And let's go ahead, I'm gonna tap off onto my mat just because I wanna keep this pretty light. Okay, bringing in the color to this first circle. And you can layer, keep bringing in color. I'm gonna go fairly light. And I recommend you do that as well. Go in light and then you can always add more. But you can't take it away. So just, just be patient and go in a little bit at a time until you get the look you want. Okay, I like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'll put pink lemonade up and off to the side. I'm gonna grab a honeysuckle and I'm not gonna worry about cleaning off my stencil between these two colors because they they are just so, they're, they're in the same pink family. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Now, the next one I'm going to do 
is, oh goodness, I'm going to have to probably move all of my inks. Oh, but they're so pretty right there. Okay. I'm going to do, and what's nice about the stencil is that you can, bring that up just a little bit, you can see right through it, right? So you can see where you are going to kind of overlap. Okay, I think that looks good. Oops, and yeah. So I'm going to place everything there. Now what I might do is bring in some additional tape just down here because now we have some area here that we could get ink on. Okay, grabbing honeysuckle. I think I'll grab my more red brush for the honeysuckle because it's definitely more of a vibrant pink gearing towards the red. It's just more bold so I kind of like to keep the lighter pinks with my paintbrush. Okay, so I'm again going to go in pretty light with my honeysuckle with the option of bumping it up. Okay, isn't that pretty? Ooh, there we go. And I love the overlap. I think that's so fun. I think we're going to have a lot of fun little color that we're going to bring in in that respect. In those little overlapping areas. Okay. So I think that's going to be good. Let's put this one away. And now I will actually clean off my stencil. Look. I love that. Oh, I need to be careful here though. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now let me just clean off my stencil just with a baby wipe here. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep my other little areas of tape intact if I can, but I wanna be mindful to make sure that I wipe down the front and back, but also make sure it's nice and dry. Okay. I think that, that should be good. All right, now the next one, see why it's nice to have, you know, a little guide because then you can just focus on the color, right? Get yourself all set up. I think I was intending something like this. And then once again, actually what I'll do is bring this. Oh, no, I wanna keep that masked gonna bring it down but I want to keep that there I'll just keep going around okay Clementine is next okay now Clementine comes in hot it is bold right away so I'm gonna tap a lot of that off and then just really be gentle with this color I really want to go for more of a light orange more of a sherbet and that's what's amazing about inks is that, you know, you can look at the color it's intended to be, right? It's a really bold, almost in my opinion, kind of pumpkin-y color. And, you know, based on what look you wanna go for, you can make it look exactly how you wish. Okay, I'm thinking there. Okay, I love these inks. All right, so done with that. The best part is revealing the stencil. Oh goodness, I'm loving this already. Okay, I'm hoping the other colors do exactly as I hope they do because so far this is really neat. Okay, so a quick wipe down of my stencil. Okay, we're gonna do Let's see. I'm going to take this off only because I'm going to tell you why. It's messing with my eye and I really want right angles here. So I need to see everything. And if I can just have more of that stencil to see through without the mask, then I, I feel like I'm going to do a better job. So I'm going to take those off place this here because now without that I can see this right and I can make sure that I'm going to go perpendicular and I want to do 
this. Okay, now let's bring in a buttercup. Making sure my brush is nice and clean. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think we should be good now. Again, going in nice and light. Pretty. I think I'll bump it up just a little bit. This is a really, really pretty yellow. Okay, I think that is what I would like to do. Okay, let's go ahead and reveal that stencil. Yes, pretty. Okay, so I am not gonna clean off between buttercup and lemongrass. I think we're good to go. I'm also still going to use my yellow. Um, brush. Okay, so now I'm going to go again. I'm going to take all this off. That way I can really line this up. I might just wipe this just so that I don't have ink that's going to transfer over. But now I want to do, let's see, I want to do this. Okay. Tape those down. My stencil's kind of following, following. <laughs> My stencil's kind of falling out of camera a little bit, but let's just tape down at the bottom as well. And then put our little masks on. Now, lemongrass is where I get nervous because I feel like lemongrass is a tricky color for me. It comes in heavy fast too. So I am going to tap this off. Look at that. I mean, it is so, it's, it's just a lot. So I'm going to just really tap that off. I might even also grab just some scrap paper. There we go. Just kind of get a little bit of it off. Okay. Let's start there and see, see what we got. It's really pretty. It's kind of like a, I don't know, it's almost like a lime green, but I don't know how to describe lemongrass. I love it though. But it is bold right out of the gate. I've had to redo cards once I get to lemongrass because for some reason, this color and I, we have a love-hate relationship. We love each other, but we struggle. Okay, I think I actually nailed it the first time on this. Ooh, pretty. Isn't that neat? Okay, so now I almost wonder though if I should bump that up a little more. Can I manage to do that? Only because it's a tad, I'm gonna try. It's a tad similar to my yellow and I want it to be different. So let me just give it a little oomph. There we go. Okay, definitely different now. All right, yay. Oh, I feel so good about that now that I've had a good success on my first time with lemongrass. Okay, let me clean off my stencil because we'll move to Tide Pool. Okay, and then we're gonna have fun going, oops, which way am I going here? We're gonna go this way and I'm going to do that. Now, I actually am going to give myself some new masks. Sometimes it's nice just to start a little fresh, start getting a little gunky. And when you're this far into a card, you don't want to have your mask, I don't know, just fail or anything. Okay, Tide Pool is next with more of this teal brush. Get this all clean. Oh, I'm going to love this so much. I already know these colors are just, they're doing exactly what I hoped they would do. How neat. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit more. Just a bit and then right there. Okay. So 
ahead and take that off. Ooh, pretty. Okay, now I actually go right, I repeat just like this because I kind of wanted to break up any monotony, right? Any Anything that was gonna be kind of predictable, I wanted to change, so there and then I'm gonna move to, try to get my masks into place, move to the color powder. And I think powder is going to be debuted on my channel on this card because I don't think I've used this ink before aside from testing it. So I am not quite sure to what to expect in terms of how this color comes in. So I tapped quite a bit off. Oh, that's pretty. Get the rest of that. Oh, nice. Okay. Trying to decide how much or how little of that I want. I think that should be pretty though. Okay, let's see how that is in comparison to the tide pool. Oh, neat. I'm gonna give that some more though. Just a little bit. I like that color though. Let's bump it up a bit. Okay, that should be perfect. There we go. Ooh, very fun. All right, and then finally, let's do a quick little wipe. And then our last color is lilac. And we are going to do this. Okay. So just like, nope, we're going to do this. Okay. So we're going to have to have fun with a crop here because now we're getting really towards the bottom but I am going to trim this panel down, so I knew that all along. All right, and as long as you have, I should have kind of pointed that out because I'm really using my mat as a guide. As long as you have your card panel, you know, really straight on your mat with your lines, then you can use that to also line up your stencil to make sure everything remains parallel and or perpendicular whichever respect you're working. Okay, so the last and final color is lilac. And, oop, oh goodness. Oh my gosh, gasp, gasp. <laughs> that was almost a lot. Okay, it would be just like me on the final color to forget a mask. Okay, here we go. Okay, this one comes in pretty pale, so it's pretty forgiving. So I'm gonna bump that up quite a bit. Ooh, that's pretty. I think this is a debut color on my channel as well. I don't think I've used this in a card yet. Okay. That is fun. And they dry back so nicely. Perfect. Okay, look at that. Isn't that fun? I really like that. Okay, the colors are just working. So as a reminder, everything that I use will be linked down in the description box below the, paint, the video. That way you know exactly what I'm using and what colors in case you forget. So I have my A2 die set and I'm thinking I'm going to go to this third one in. I think that's going to be it. Oh yeah, that that hugs it all really nicely. Pretty. Okay, I think I'm going to do that. So, that looks good side to side and maybe up a little bit, up and down. Ooh, that's pretty. Final answer. So, let me that actually worked out a little too well in terms of spacing. All right, I'm going to run this through my spellbinders really quickly, and then let's have fun with doing some, some fun wording with some sentiments. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just angle that so it runs through really nice. I'm just double checking that it didn't move. Okay, and let's go ahead and trim that down. 
There we go. Let's just pop that right out. Look. Oh, perfect. Okay. I hate to use the word perfect, but that, that really did work out pretty ideally. All right. Now what I was thinking of doing is I have these really neat, tiny little simple sentiments that is what they're called. And I thought it would be kind of fun to put a little variety around here and just have fun with some, like a little variety of, of wording and, and then put it with some black ink to make it kind of have some contrast. So I have two sets here and I'll link them down below. I have set one and number two, both are must haves, absolute must haves. I use these all the time. Okay, so, um, and I love this. You know what, I don't think I've noticed this yet. Obviously handmade by, how adorable is that? It'd be cute for the back of your card. Okay, so, okay, I, I love both of them. I'm gonna go with this set number one because I want to do Hello Friend, I Miss Your Face, and then Thinking of You. I think that would be super fun. So now I just need to decide where I want that all to go. I kind of think the Hello Friend, where is it now? Oh my goodness, I just lost it. Hello Friend. Hello Friend would be really cute here, right? And you could even kind of layer it. Oh, I like that idea. Layer that there. Then we could do, I miss your face. Something maybe like this. And then the other one, let's just, let's just start Let's start with the first one because the first one I definitely know I want there. And I would not be able to do this without my mini misty. So I'm gonna bring in my mini misty here. I'm also going to use a memento ink. And let's start with Hello Friend. Here it is. Now I'm gonna bring this a little bit more towards myself. And I think that would be really neat. Something like that. Okay, I really think that that is good. Okay, let me double check though. I think that's good. Okay, we'll just, we'll just pray. Also double check here because I just am so nervous. We've already put so much time into that pretty panel. Okay, grabbing my ink, inking that up. And this is a very thin little font used. So I am just going to go like this. Not a lot of pressure. Okay. That is so cute. Oh, I love this. Okay. There we go. Just more for contrast. And again, I don't want to smush the stamp and make it bolder than it needs to be, but that is adorable. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. Very quickly grabbing a little wet wipe. And now I want to move toward, let's see, I think I said I miss your face, which I think that's just so cute. All of these sentiments are adorable. So I miss your face is up at the top. I must have used it before. And I'm wondering if I could do something like that. Really cute. Okay, so I miss your face. There we go. And, oops, oh goodness. That's good. I'm just looking on the lines of my Misty. Let's go ahead. I guess I didn't need to condition that. It's kind of a habit at this point to condition my stamps, which, I mean, it's a wonderful habit to have because it's not hurting it by redoing it. And if you're not familiar with what that is, when they create the stamp, there's kind of a coating on the stamp. So if you rub your finger or palm over it, then there we go. Um, it kind of removes that, right? So that it, the first stamp is a little bit more successful. Okay, I'm gonna make that a little bit more. We have some good contrast there. Very nice, okay. Moving right along. And I think I'm just gonna go with a trio. I like the idea of a trio. So, thinking of you. Okay. So thinking of you, I can use, I like using this to kind of give me an idea of what I wanna do. I kind of wanna go 
well, let's see. I don't want this to line up perfectly. I don't want to, you know, line these two up the same. Though I do like the idea of it spanning across a couple of colors. So I think I could even, let's do that. I, I think I'm going to bring it out even more. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. And in fact, I like the placement too. So now, let's just make sure it's straight. I think that's it. Just look at the lines there. Yep. Okay. Reposition. And then, first I'm gonna press that down. Okay, really good. Condition that. All right. Last one. Ink, ink. And transfer. Oh, I love it. I really like it. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Major exhale. I was, I was holding my breath there. I did not want to ruin that panel at the last minute. Okay, so now I will remove my stamp because let me tell you, this is a stamp set that has a potential to get lost in a hurry. They're so teeny tiny. So I want to keep these. I don't even, I don't even put these with my regular stamps. I keep them in a pocket of my most used items because I want to be able to grab for them right away all the time. Okay, let's grab this little guy out. And I want to put this on a card and then maybe do a couple sim simple little embellishments. But then I really think that this is pretty much done. This time I'm going to bring in 110 pound cardstock. This is sized at 11 by four and a quarter. And I want this to fold at the top. So I'm going to place my score line at five and a half. And then that through a couple times. And then I'll just crease that down. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and secure this with little magnets. And then I wanna put some foam tape on the back of this and just give it a subtle bit of dimension. Okay, now let's place this right down. All right, oh, I'm loving this. I almost don't wanna give it away. And Oh, and I really like that crop. It gives a really fun margin in there. Okay, I have these. I'm intrigued by the idea of doing a little tone on tone with a couple of the colors. Only the colors, obviously, that color match super well, which I think is only going to be, I don't think this, this one's not it. It's only going to be four of them. So, let me see here. I'm kind of thinking it would be pretty awesome to do something like this. And I'm just going to lightly place them down for a moment. And I could have fun with size here. Oh, that's too big. Oh, no, it's not too big. That looks great. In fact, I already know that this is what I'm going to do, so I'm going to press those down. That's really cool. Okay, so I'm going to do that, that. I'm going to do this. Aren't these neat? I also have, oh goodness, I have some from Waffle Flower too. Let's see. You know, that I think that's, ooh, it actually looks good on this, surprisingly between the two, I think it color matches better there. So I think I will do maybe the bigger one. I, yep, that's it. It is, oh my gosh, I love that. And then I will do the two-tone purple. Okay, and I think that that purple is actually, it's gonna be pretty close. Um, gosh, where are those other enamel dots? I think that'll work. Okay, and I'm actually for that gonna go like that, I think. Okay, I wanna see if I can color match. I just need one more, because I only have four. I really wanna do five. 
Okay, I found some. So let's just look. In fact, I'm gonna take this off because the other purple, let me see here. The other purple I think is a little bit of a better match. So I'm gonna take this off, place it right back on the sheet. And I'm gonna go over to this. See how much better that is? Well, not better, not better. It's, um, it matches. It's more accurate to this, this color. Okay, there we go, I like that. Now I do want something, I think, that's not gonna work. Ooh, this yellow, that yellow works really well. And I'm gonna do that. So I might even just go, do I wanna go just right under? Let's see here. That yellow though, that, that worked perfect. And then, you know what I like? I'm gonna go right under. I like that it kind of goes like that. We have it just cascading down. That's that's pretty much it. Okay, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm also confidently saying this. This is my favorite card that I have made, period. I adore this. I think this is so fun. So let it be known that September 2023, I proclaimed my favorite card. I absolutely think this is so fun. So I hope this was inspiring to you. I hope that you enjoyed this idea of what you can do with some fun stencils by creating a repeating pattern, which you know is pretty random as well, right? And I loved the idea of just bringing in a lot of color, but also being really simple with the sentiments. I had no idea that I was going to do the enamel dots, but I think that that really pulled the card together at the end. And I am obsessed with the visual interest. So my favorite card, in fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stamp the back so that I can have my name on the back. Okay, Bethany, do not mess this up because we are in the final quarter. Okay, I have my little handmade by Bethany stamp. I have my ink here. Let's ink this up. Okay. Hopefully I can do this well. Here we go. There it is. So cute. All right. It's official. I love it. So sweet. Please be sure if you enjoyed watching this come together, please be sure to give this a thumbs up. I certainly, certainly enjoyed creating this for you. I really enjoyed myself actually when I was creating this. I love the idea of just having some time to sit and be still. And it just is such a nice surprise in the end to see how it all comes together. All right, I can't wait to continue crafting with you in the next video. Be sure to check the description box below the video for a full list of supplies used to bring this card together. And I'll see you soon.